Hello? Mr. Wet? Yes? How you doing? This is the Robin Slim Show. Yes, uh, fine. I've been waiting for the call. Sorry, we're a minute late. How are you doing, oh, no, sir? No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 problem. Uh, no, no, no problem. No, 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 I just, uh, um, well, I'm here, gentlemen, if you want to uh, go ahead. You are a forensic pathologist, and you've been involved in many cases over the years. You've been in uh, Robert, F. Ken Robert F. Kennedy, JFK, the Char Sharon Tate case, Elvis Presley, and we are honored to be talking to you, sir. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you for having invited me to be on your show. We we saw you. I know Slim watched it after I uh, recommended it to him. I saw you in the Soaked in Bleach documentary, which was oh on. yeah yeah. I'm glad you saw that. That's a very uh, very interesting case um, indeed. Uh, no matter what someone uh, concludes, uh, ultimately, the fact of the matter is that, you know, the investigation, uh, if you can call it that, there really was a non-investigation. Therein lies the problem. Yeah. Uh, they just uh, made the assumption it's a suicide. Um, the scene uh, was not, of course, uh, sealed off. Uh, people walked in. Um, so, um, you know, the kind of physical uh, forensic evidence that one would look for uh, that should have been um, carefully carefully scrutinized um, because uh, you know the of course they didn't know about the toxicology they didn't know about the uh, uh, high uh, heroin level mm. subsequently and they just assumed that it's a, a suicide it may have been a suicide but uh, the uh, <clears throat> findings of an, enough of the uh, morphine, heroin, uh, to kill three or four people um, yeah. having been injected uh, by him, and then everything put neatly back into his drug kit, the tourniquet has been taken off the arm, the needle has been taken from the syringe, everything has been placed back in this uh, nice little kit and clipped, and then he takes the shotgun and shoots himself. Well, that's not the way, that's not the way it works. <laughs> Even somebody who just shot up wouldn't be thinking to shoot themselves, which I think you brought up. Like, yeah, well, just... that's right. Uh, and and uh, you know, actually, that kind of a of a push, that kind of a cerebral uh, thrust. Um, yeah, then first of all, you, you know, you're either flying uh, high heaven, uh, yeah. feeling feeling uh, great. Or, you know, it could possibly, uh, a dose like that, uh, that puts you out from under, but then to take the shotgun. And then the location of the shotgun uh, did not fit in with the way he was lying, yeah. with his hands and so on. Well, a very, very fascinating case. The um, former police chief, the uh, chief at that time, he has gone on record now, he's retired, as saying that uh, um, had he, you know, well, were he chief today, now um, he would certainly reopen that case. So uh, I don't know what's going to be done. Mm -hmm. I'm never too optimistic in these cases uh, where official findings and rulings have been made uh, simply because uh, you're dealing then with reputations. You're dealing with the people, uh, officials, whether it be uh, the local medical examiner coroner, um, the mayor, the county executive, the senator, governor, the feds, uh, whomever, the family, uh, everything has been put to bed. So whether it's Lee Harvey Oswald um, or whether it's Sirhan Sirhan, um, then, uh, you know, you've you've got a situation where people just are not going to, uh, uh, you know, be uh, interested in, in opening. And by the way, that carries on over, you see, to the news media. So um, if you have a fresh case, and an investigative reporter jumps on it, then they may pursue it. And especially the big shots, the New York Times, Washington Post, if you're talking about a national figure. But, but, where the big boys themselves have bought into a scenario, then to expect them, years later, to come back and um, express their regret and issue an apology uh, mm -hmm. for journalistic malpractice, which is what it is. I'm not suggesting anything of a conspiratorial nature mm. uh, that the uh, government, for example, uh, sat down with the New York Times, Washington Post, uh, at all, uh, 
vis-a-vis JFK. No, but but you know, they, they were in fact the New York Times. They they wrote their own book. It became a bestseller. I think they sold well over a hundred thousand copies mm-hmm. within a few months after Kennedy's death. So now to expect it, and uh, you know, you can never we uh, the the critic researcher community. Uh, uh, you, you can't get them to cover uh, our events uh, and major conferences and presentations by top-notch scientists, forensic pathologists, radiologists, uh, physicists, ballistics experts uh, to show uh, certain things are erroneous uh, and impossible, and uh, for that matter, uh, mm. set forth in the Warren Commission report. Forget about it. Um, and, you know, I... It, I, I used to be, I guess when I was younger, I was somewhat naive, and not that I've become a, a cynical pessimist in my old age, <laughs> but I've just come to be more of a realist. Yeah. And, uh, so, well, anyway, um, I am sorry uh, to have gone off on a, a tangent here, but I think that you guys want to, you want to cover uh, any and all cases. You sound so, like Ronald uh, Reagan. I enjoyed it, yes. <laughs> That was amazing. Um, has anything you've ever seen ever rattled rattled you? Like, does anything still bother you to the day? In any still bother me? Well, well, of course, still bothers me. Um, not in the sense that I sit around and brood. I'm far too uh, busy um, and have been uh, 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 with every passing year. And this year, I think it may may be the busiest year I've ever had. Um, uh, well, on my way to doing. Another 450 autopsies. Where I did 456 last year. Wow. I've already, uh, at the rate I'm going, uh, I'm going to reach that number uh, this year. My medical legal consultations uh, from all over, and I, I mean all over, uh, including uh, foreign consultations. I got an email today from uh, the Solicitor General of a uh, large foreign country that wants me to come over and. Uh, do a second autopsy on a case involving a high-level political figure. Wow. Uh, and so on. So, but consultations uh, oh, uh, I know that you is. Know, all over. And, you know, I'm busy tomorrow. I leave uh, for the American College of Legal Medicine um, where I'll be uh, giving a paper. I'm a past president. There's a luncheon event named after me. Um, and um, next week I, uh, I will be testifying uh, in a malpractice case, and then I'll be... Uh, deposed uh, in a uh, airplane crash that killed uh, three people. So, you know, that's a typical uh, week for me. Wow. Um, and, crazy. And, it's only uh, Wednesday. And, oh, and <laughs> yeah. I, I also, I, I'm, I'm committed to write a 800,000-word uh, uh, piece on uh, Justice Scalia's death oh. for a uh, a large local uh, newspaper. Wow. I said, fine, I'll do that. And, uh, you know, so that's, uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, other uh, other things, uh, uh, teaching here and there, um, working on a couple of books. One is a big autobiography I met with my co-author today, and another one um, is uh, going to be a kind of a 50-year summary of my involvement in the JFK assassination. And then I yeah. have a book uh, that will be published now in about four to six weeks, um, a revised, updated, expanded book uh, entitled... Uh, forensic pathology in civil and criminal cases. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm very happy. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, sometimes it gets a little <laughs> a little uh, heavy, um, but you, you can't, uh, you know, you can't control. You know, I don't tell people when the case is going to go to trial. I forgot to mention I got a couple of local murder cases to testify in, in which I did autopsies for coroners. I do autopsies for coroners and district attorneys in four surrounding counties, as well as for private families. Oh, and that's where I get that 456 number I, I mentioned a moment ago, um, the autopsies uh, that I do. So I, uh, there's two of those cases coming up in which I'll be testifying. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a full uh, agenda when planning for a couple of national conferences under the auspices of the Cyril H. Wick Institute of Forensic Science and Law at Duquesne University. Uh, one's going to be on mental health and the law covering, you know, all aspects, civil and criminal. And um, another one, a special program uh, will be we're establishing honoring uh, top flight people in forensic sciences. And we've selected my dear friend and colleague, the internationally renowned criminalist Dr. Henry Lee, to uh, be 
the recipient of our first uh, um, uh, award. And so, um, you know, those things, everything, you know, takes a little bit of time here and there. Um, but uh, I, I'm not complaining. I want to be busy. I'm fortunate uh, <laughs> and, you know, enjoying uh, good health. I have, uh, you know, the minor ailments that come with uh, age, but nothing serious. And uh, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed uh, that my four children, their spouses, and the 11 grandchildren, that they all live in Pittsburgh. Well, three three of the grandchildren are Go away at college, but, but everybody goes Steelers, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but uh, you know, they all live here, and wow. we, get to, we get together for for a big Sunday a family dinner and That's then awesome. other uh, other dinners and events in between and going to this one's hockey game and that one's soccer game <laughs> and so on. So I, I How truly, do you find time uh, for that? I'm truly oh, impressed. Geez. Well, we, we, we make sure that we fit that in. Uh, family family uh, comes first. I agree. I've always felt that way. Uh, Especially for the I, yins. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, for the, for the uh, you're right, you're right. Um, so anyway, that's... Uh, that's the uh, the background, cool. and um, that's uh, my uh, typical day, week, uh, month, and year. Are you ever going to stop doing uh, autopsies or, or um, working? Well, uh, ever. I, I, I guess ever, unless I can make uh, one of those Dorian Gray packs <laughs> or begin to, uh, with the devil, um, <laughs> maybe, maybe find a uh, special combination of testosterone, human growth hormone, and uh, a couple of other drugs, and begin to take those. Uh, um, but uh, no, you know, the the answer to your question is, of course, I shall stop eventually. But as of now, you know, yeah. I have no fixed date or plan of retirement. That's I'm amazing. able to do these. I'm able to do these things uh, physically. I've got strong support. My wife, who is an attorney, um, she. Uh, Kind of, you know, as the executive uh, secretary running the show, and I've got uh, two other full-time secretaries, and I have my uh, my uh, autopsy uh, um, technician assistant who's been with me now for about uh, 35, 40 years. Wow! And um, and then you know other people whom I call upon uh, <clears throat> as needed. But I've I've got you know people that have been with me for many years, and um, I'm able to function and keep things moving along in a timely crisp fashion hmm. did you have a question dave yeah uh now you said you were looking into the scalia death are you suspicious about well that? Like, no i didn't mean i was are. looking into it officially under anybody's oh i'm not saying you, no, no i don't mean officially but I was, like you're, i've been i've been interviewed your professional by opinion. quite a few people uh, uh, on that uh, and as recently in fact as today by somebody. Well, what, what do you gentlemen think? What, what do you want to ask? Uh, you're the, you're the, you've just been appointed as a special <laughs> oh, investigator, <laughs> or you're being interviewed. What, what, what questions do you have, if any, about uh, Justice Scalia's death and the way in which it was handled? Well, uh, I've been following it a lot. I'm very political, and I'm convinced the liberal killed him. <laughs> you're so you're you're a, you're a you're a, basically then a conservative political person. Well, well, I'm, I consider or, myself. Or were, you, or were you being facetious? No, I, I consider <laughs> myself independent. But th this election, uh, yeah, you could call me a conservative for this election for sure. But uh, no, were right you being lane. serious when you said that? No, I, yeah, uh, you no, call, I've heard. I know many because a lot of people, that. a lot of people that, have been. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A lot of people have been saying that they can't find uh, the, the reason why he died. And um, apparently the guy was healthy as can be, they were saying. So, and with everything going on with the election right now, the, the, the liberals and the Democrats are trying to do anything to make sure Republicans well, not the I, president. You know, I've, I've heard this uh, from uh, several people like you, intelligent, educated people, mm -hmm. who have raised this question. And I, and I think it's, it's a legitimate uh, question. Yeah. Um, then uh, turn the coin over. Mm -hmm. And I've heard then from the liberal camp, who are certain that something was going on um, with uh, Justice Scalia that um, uh, the uh, government, family, at all did not want to bring up. Well, you know, let's, let's go back. Well, I just want to bring up facts. something real quick. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just, I just find it very odd that our president did not go to the wake for Justice well, Scalia. Well, that, that's another matter, and I agree with you completely. I think that was a terrible breach of, of it was etiquette. awful, disgusting. I'm, I'm, I, mean, I mean, for the president not to have gone there. I do not understand mm. why 
uh, he would have done that. He did mm. go to the ceremony the day before, but uh, for that, for he, he went I to think, the yeah. thing for that but kid. Let's, 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 yeah, go ahead. Uh, let's I'm go sorry. back and, yeah. and visit the, uh, the the the. First of all, we have the justice um, going uh, to this uh, ranch lodge in western Texas. Uh, owned by this uh, gentleman named Poindexter. Uh, he goes there as uh, Poindexter's guest. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, very few people know this, and this is not something that uh, I'm, I'm privy to alone in some confidential fashion, mm -hmm. but I have had this checked out. It is a matter of record, and I bet you that 95, 98% of the people who will listen to this program um, do not know this, and that is that a second person... Um, was booked in with the justice. I do not know who it was. I have no idea, really, honestly. But a second person traveled with the with the justice and was part of of that reservation, uh, so to speak. All right, mm. that that person uh. has not been. All right, that person has not been identified, and and I find that amazing. Um, that uh, we don't know who it because is. Because they're hiding what, it. What, 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 well, okay, all right, so let's just, yeah. let, let's just continue. Mm. Then the justice tells his security detail, uh, which all the Supreme Court justices have, that they're not necessary. He does not need them, he does not want them to go with him. So they're not with him. Now he's there, and, uh, mm. and he goes to sleep, he goes to his room mm -hmm. after dinner, and he's found um, late the next morning when he doesn't uh, answer the door. Um, and uh, re he's reported to have been found with a pillow over his head or face. Now, I'm not jumping to a conclusion. I, I know some people sleep like that. Um, uh, or in the final... Yeah, people try to kill room. themselves. Well, you know... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, no, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm only kidding. kidding. I, I sleep with yeah. a blanket Or in the final... Agonal moments, let's say, if you're mm. if you're having a heart attack and you've got severe chest pains and you're reaching out, you you could grab for the pillow. But but nevertheless, it's an atypical finding. Okay, um, wow. the justice of the let's continue on. The justice of the peace is on her way. She's the equivalent of a local coroner uh, to go there. She's been notified. She receives a call from the federal marshals telling her that she should not go um, to just uh, go back home. They'll take care of it. Well, let me tell you something else that maybe most people, I'm sure most people, do not know, and that is there is no legislative um, enactment on the books to exclude anybody from the jurisdiction of the local medical examiner or coroner other than the president and vice president of the United States. That came into being following the JFK assassination when they passed that law. But if you're a governor, a U.S. senator, a Supreme Court justice, uh, a mayor, um, a legislator, a congressman, and you commit suicide, you're murdered, you die in a motor vehicular accident, uh, you drown, whatever it is, the feds have no jurisdiction in that case mm. no matter how big you are it is not their case the feds had no jurisdiction and no authority to intervene as they did sorry, go ahead. michael i'm sorry uh cyril we have a caller on the line i think with a question for you well i want i wanted go to ahead. finish up i wanted oh. to finish up with the scalia thing if i can just sure. to give you the whole scenario um no doctor sees the body, forensic pathologist, medical examiner, um, nobody goes there. Um, as far as I know, uh, it was not a, a team then, I mean, or a homicide detector, not to suggest it's a homicide, but the way in which I know I was coroner for 20 years of Allegheny County, and I've uh, written books and papers about uh, these things, how they function. Mm. Uh, if you're going to sign out a case, uh, one of the... Uh, 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 let, me hope, let me put that on hold, and I'll come back to what, what is necessary if you're going to release the body. The body then is taken to a funeral home a couple hundred miles away in El Paso. It is embalmed, thereby destroying the, uh, uh, the toxicological analysis, the validity of any toxicology once you uh, do embalming uh, of the body. And then he's taken to Washington and buried. Um, so that's the scenario. And one final point, 
and that is that in the seven days, with all the conjecture, uh, like uh, um, one of you gentlemen, uh, you know, as stated uh, some minutes ago uh, uh, about the, he, he was murdered by the liberal camp and uh, other people conjecturing on the other side, whatever it is, this is going on, has gone on all over America, and uh, nothing wrong. In fact, I would be surprised if that uh, had not been the case. Tell me something. Do you find it strange? Not forget, you're not a friends pathologist, you're not an attorney, you're not a homicide detective. Do you find it strange that people all over the country are talking about that and conjecturing one that he was murdered, or two, that he may have died in bed uh, with a, uh, a young woman or, or whatever. Do you find it strange that nobody in this family, the wife and nine adult educated children, not one of them, or a spokesperson, and you could imagine uh, all the people they know, the major uh, uh, attorneys and others who would be a spokesperson, do you find it a little strange that the family does not have a statement issued by uh, a, a top figure uh, saying to the American public, please, we've lost our our husband, our father, um, we've lost, America has lost this great man, this uh, tremendous uh, jurist, uh, and so on. Mm. Um, we, we have looked into it. We know, talking with his doctor, um, that uh, it would not be unexpected, and so on. So we ask you, please, um, show respect for this great man, even those of you who disagreed with him in terms of his judicial philosophy would agree that he was a great American patriot and, and, and scholar and so on. Uh, please respect us. Join us in this period of grief. Uh, provide us with your uh, with with comfort and solace as we go through this horrible time and so on. Would you not have expected a statement like that, more eloquently delivered uh, after in, throughout a seven-day period, instead of just leaving it out hanging? Now think about that. And let me just come back now at the body being released. Some people say, "Well, it's Texas law." Here's how you can release a body of a 79-year-old person um, who dies unexpectedly. Number one, uh, you make sure that you talk with his doctor and you find out that you know he had some some significant problems. Did not have to be terribly serious, but I'm not talking about a hernia or a bad back or a uh, a tricky knee. I'm talking about, you know, did he have some heart problems? Did he have some pulmonary problems um, such that you might expect a death? Strange Number two, boy. did did somebody with authority and knowledge go to the scene and talk with the people there and make sure that everything was fine? And three, did somebody, if not a doctor, at least somebody who's trained as a medical legal investigator, uh, look at the body uh, and so on, and then the body being found with a pillow over head. Don't you want to view the body then? We do, it was called an external examination or inspection. You don't have to do an autopsy, but you, you, you view the body unclothed and you draw blood for toxicology. Now, none of that, none of those things was done. So mm. uh, I then I okay. So there's the scale, uh, scale of the scenario, and uh, it, Listen, it's out there. I, I'm sorry, we don't want to interrupt. We do have a call on the line, and we don't have yes. much more time for this. Okay, uh, go ahead. So, go can the ahead. caller ask you a quick question? Sure, absolutely. Go, okay. ahead. go ahead. No, we get a nine, got an hour. Oh, the oh, we got an hour. I didn't know yeah. we have an hour. Okay, caller, do you have a question? Uh yes, I do. Okay. Uh, this is Michael Frost, and I will have to say that I am a big fan of your work. I actually did a re I did a book report when I went to Whitney Young in Chicago oh. on you. I, I did a report on you, and one of the things that I found so legendary was that your, how would I put it, you, you approached, like the Kennedys, you approached so much of your work with, an unbiased level of opinion, but I think there was always something more. And I know you said earlier you don't want your direction to come off like any type of conspiracy theories, but we do live kind of in 
a world of Los Caesars here we, where they just want to do what they can. And the question I have is, even with what you've just been talking about, do you ever feel that society itself is going to come step forth and demand from social government answers to these things? Or is it just going to be just sort of like that lone gunman, that, that, that Oswald, and everybody believes that that's what it is supposed to be? No, 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 no not everybody. Uh, only, only a quarter to a third of Americans believe the Warren Commission report and Lee Harvey Oswald as 60... <laughs> To 65 to 80 percent of the American public has rejected the Warren Commission report in poll after poll since the late 60s. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. <laughs> no, and, and and that's actually that's an answer I was hoping to hear from you. Um, once again, I just wanted to call in because when Rob yeah. told me that you were going to be on the air, I knew exactly who you were, and I'm. You know, I'm 43 now, but I did I did that report back in 1989, <laughs> and I have I have a lot of respect for you. And well, that just to hear you speak on the show was just amazing. I mean, well, I, uh, I write horror, and I can never write what mankind can ever do. I mean, I yep. make it up. I got to make people believe that everything that's coming out of my mouth is true. But for you to to deal with this on a daily basis, and you just said four hundred, would you say four hundred fifty six this year alone? I mean, that is oh. Well, I extend my hand to you, sir, and I just wanted to say hello. All right. All right. Thank you for your very very gracious personal comments. Um, it's, 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 it's heartwarming to hear somebody uh, who uh, you know is a fan and, and goes back that many years. Uh, you know, in response to your observations and you know your overall question, the fact of the matter is that when people like this die, and um, you know, I'm not suggesting that you that a law could be passed. That's not going to happen. But the families, the families of those people. Don't they realize, in, in a way, they have a responsibility. They owe something to the American people, um, whether it's John Kennedy, um, 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 and Mary Jo Kopechny in the Ted Kennedy case, um, Robert Kennedy in the Sirhan case. You can talk about uh, that case and, and why there had to have been a second shooter. In cases where they don't do an autopsy, like Nelson Rockefeller, uh, in having a little affair on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan, um, like uh, Secretary of Commerce Ron Brown um, in an airplane crash over Bosnia-Herzegovina being brought back to the States, and uh, a hole in the head that one forensic pathologist thought looked like a bullet hole and no autopsy was done. Um, and, uh, um, you know, K cases in finessing Elvis Presley, medical examiner saying it wasn't his case, but a private autopsy would be done, and the medical examiner then calling it a heart case. In fact, there were 12 drugs that killed Elvis Presley, not a heart disease. So, but I mean, major figures, you and your, their families, there is a, how shall I put it, a kind of a moral, uh, ethical uh, sense of responsibility. I mean, um, I, it, it's hard hard to express I mean, this, I sometimes, but but I'm just saying that the, you, you know to, to to leave it out there like this is just just not 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 right. It's it's just would, not would right. Do you think do you think these families are more? They just simply condense themselves into some sort of inner fear, and they would just rather it just pass by. Or do you think? Well, yes, that yes, are, that's are, right. Hmm? I know I know for a fact because I've talked with the attorney who represented the Kopechny family. I know for a fact they did not want an autopsy, and I testified in that case in Wilkes-Barre, Luzerne County, Pennsylvania, in behalf of the district attorney from Suffolk County, Boston, who was trying to get the body exhumed. No autopsy had been done in Massachusetts, where the death occurred in Chappaquiddick. Um, they were trying to get the body exhumed. Um, and, and, and I know um, in many later years, it just happened about uh, two years ago, I was speaking at a big conference there. Um, I mean, Teddy's Diamond the, School is the attorney, awesome. the attorney, The attorney came up. I know the family was concerned. What if she were pregnant? Um, you know, very, very uh, strict Catholic family. They were concerned the about, the about that. 
and then you know they and so you know the uh, Nelson Rockefeller you know they they didn't want to have a, a, he died in a heart attack and maybe in the arms of his mistress Elvis Presley they knew damn well that he had been doing drugs and so on so that you have these icons you have these major figures these godlike figures um, uh, and and. And, and the families, the the, the government, uh, governmental people, in the cases of some some uh, political types and so on, uh, you know, and 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 that's the way some of these cases are covered up. It's it's fascinating to think. You see, if it's just you or you or me, Joe Jones or Bob Smith or Tom Brown, you know, you you're not going to be able to finesse it. I guarantee you, if Joe Jones had died at that ranch lodge in in western texas suddenly unexpectedly with the pillow of his head i would give you 100 to 1 odds that body would have been autopsy no matter what the family said but i blame that on the liberal yep. racist media Absolutely. that's out there though because i mean you have, right. you, you have you have natalie holloway out there this blonde haired blue eyed devil right she goes out she gets murdered it's news for 3 years you have yeah. three other black people die in similar incidents and they do nothing about that it's just another one of the white man's lies where they're going out there and perpetrating a fraud yeah. against humanity <laughs> yeah they don't even know they don't even know i agree <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, Obama it's killed him. Obama. Killed him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, he would never do that. Kidding. His people would have, would do it. Well, just like guys, the Clintons yeah. and Vince Foster. The, 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 you conservatives will have to wait until he's no longer president <laughs> because now he 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 has. Well, I, I actually he can, he can pardon I don't himself, consider. So wait, wait until I don't consider January myself. Before you bring the I don't consider church. myself like a libertarian or a conservative. I consider um, myself libertarian. I consider in my myself life, I, I just know that <laughs> I I just know that there's been a lot of controversy that's surrounded a lot of these yeah, sure. deaths. And you know, I, I've always considered myself a proud American. I, I served two branches of the military. I've I served in both Gulf Wars. Thank you and God bless. And thank you. Oak and, maple. and I thought, Make and I thought, branches. you know, when I walk away, I felt honored. But then, once you start looking between the lines, you start feeling a little bit pensive, if I can well, say yeah, it in the you slightest deal, word. You got to deal. With, well, see what what is very offensive to me. I mean, I was asked a question a while ago, the things that bother me, and so on. And I started to say yes. Uh, I don't sit around and and brood. I think I said because I'm so busy. Um, but let me let me say that you you deal you should deal with matters of hard uh, science, forensic, pathological, uh, ballistics findings, uh, whatever they be, toxicological findings, um, and go beyond conjecture when you can. So, for example, let me ask you gentlemen, let me hear, uh, how far was Sirhan Sirhan, um, he was standing in front of the senator, Senator Kennedy had just won the California primary, uh, they but ended up with a bullet hole in the back of his head. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. So taking, him out, <laughs> taking him out through the back room, the kitchen pantry, and he's walking there, and Sir Han is in front of him. Oh, Sir Han shoots. How, how, how far, far, how far was Sir Han? Pardon me? Yeah, because, you know, Kennedy, he was banging cocktail reaches two at a time. Well, no, man, answer answer my question. How Listen, far? hey, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, but we actually got to wrap this up. Uh, okay. Michael, thank you for the call. We very much appreciate no, it, no. and... Uh, um, All right, well, who's, uh, okay, Sco Mr. Sco Wax? Uh, can you just promote uh, where anybody can find any of your work, and then we'll let you go, okay? Yeah, man? yeah, sure, sure. Well, I have there's a website out there. Uh, you can look me up on the website, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know I'm I'm listed. I'm not important enough not to be listed. I'm listed uh, in Pittsburgh uh, in my office. Uh, go Steelers. Um, and so on, so go Steelers. Okay, well, gentlemen, I thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. It's and, not your uh, being kill Kennedy. <laughs> and I would love to have a Roethlisberger with you one day. Well, it wasn't. Well, by the way, uh, thank, uh, thank you uh, for me all that you've ever done because I, I find the uh, writing to be. I will amazing. see you down the Liberty Ave one day in I, Pittsburgh. I do like these guys; they're really good, and well, I, I will always be a good follower of yours. Right. Well, thank you very much. I am thank hard. you, gentlemen. Thank you. And I thank hope you. we'll talk again sometime in the future. Okay. Yes, we my, will. My taint loves it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bless the taint.